I'd like to introduce you to Scribble.com, which is Scribble with one B L E dot com. This is a way to annotate the web. So it allows students to go to any web page and to create notes, to highlight notes, to save those notes, and then be able to find them later. All right, so here is how Scribble works. First thing you need to do is uh, students need to sign in, sign up. Uh, they're going to click on sign in. What you're going to do here is they're going to sign in with their Google accounts. So click on this G here. And that allows them to sign in with their .NET Google account. All right, now the first thing we need to do to be able to use Scribble is to add the toolbar to this bookmarks bar. The way to do that is uh, students will have to click on add the toolbar. And you're going to see a little button here. The directions are here, but here's the, here's the directions. You click and you drag this button up to, your, up to your bookmarks bar, which is at the top. This is my bookmarks bar. When I drag it up there, there it is. Now one problem that I've seen is if you're using Google Chrome, sometimes this bookmarks bar is not here. So I just want to make sure you know how to get it if you do not see it. If that bookmarks bar is missing, click on these three lines, go down to settings. Down here a little bit, scrolling down, you're going to see a setting right here, always show the bookmarks bar. You want to make sure that's on. If it's off, turn it on. As soon as you turn it on, that bookmarks bar will appear. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drag that bar or that button up to my bookmarks bar. Now, once that button is there for the students, they can go to any web page and start annotating. All right, so I'm going to go over here to a Wikipedia entry about a Wordsworth poem. And I'm going to annotate this and show you how it works. Once students have arrived at the, at the page they want to annotate, all they do is click on that button they just dragged up here. That loads a toolbar right here. And what you can do is you can click and drag that toolbar for wherever it's easiest for you to work. I like mine at the top. And here's how it works. So down here I'm going to scroll down to the actual poem. And I can start annotating right here on the poem. So if I want to add highlighter, click on the highlighter. Drag. You can do different colors of highlighting to highlight different parts. Students can also put in notes. So if I click on add a note, the default is purple. But again, uh, I just click on the part that I want to add a note to. And I can add a note right here. So I can identify different parts of the poem, different things I want to pull out. You can click and drag the size of the notes. You can also move those notes to where you want them. You can also do different color notes, just like the highlighting. You can also change the color of the text. So if I want to uh, just do the color of the text, so maybe highlight some parts and just change the text color on others, you can. You can also underline. So if I take the underlining, very simple. Of course, you've got your undo and your redo buttons. This button is a really good one. This is a button where if you bunch, get a bunch of notes on a page, if a students want to read this unencumbered, Without all the notes showing up, they can just click on this button and that shows and hides all the notes that you've made. Okay, um, I also want to show you how to save these notes and how to link them. The first thing is students are going to want to save these annotations. So I'm going to click on the Save button. And what that does is it allows them to give a, a name for the page. So they'll want to make sure that they give a descriptive name. It does, the, it does the default name page, so they can keep that if they want. Enter comments here. But I definitely want to show you this tag spot. This is when they annotate their uh, web pages. They can add tags that will help them find them later. So for example, if I'm doing this in ELA, I can add the ELA tag, put a comma. I can also put poetry, put a comma. And I can also put maybe the name of the author of the poem. When I click on apply, it adds those tags. And I'll show you what that uh, does in a little bit. All right, so I'm saving my annotation to my library. You can also, before I leave this, you can also click here to create a link that you can send. Uh, this link will take them, whoever gets the link will take directly to this page with the annotations on it. And so here's the link. I can just copy and paste that to wherever I need it. I can put it on Edmodo. I can put it on Moodle. I could send it through email. And there's another email button as well. So if you want to directly email somebody with your annotated page, you can do it here. 
All right, I want to also show you that uh, this is a web page of Wikipedia. You can also do this on any web page. So I'm on Wikipedia. You can do it on CNN.com. So here I am on CNN. I've got an opinion piece here. I can annotate this page as well. Again, just click on the bookmark bar, toolbar. It'll load it up. And I can go ahead and start annotating. So again, take my chunk of text, add my note, move my note to wherever I want it to be. And again, save it just like the others. This one I'm just going to save, and as a tag, I'm just going to put opinion. All right, so now that we have all these annotations, if students are doing this a lot, and this is a really great way for them to kind of read the web and pull it apart, they can go back and find all their own notes and their annotations. It automatically logs them. Here's how they do it. I'm going to come back to, I'm going to close these tabs. I'm going to come back to Scribble, so I'm back at Scribble.com, and I'm going to go to My Library. When students start adding a bunch of annotations, they're going to have a large amount of things in their libraries. Um, I can just click right directly on any of these things that I've saved, and it will pull it right back up. So exactly that poem that I just annotated, I click the link, and here it comes back up with all my annotations right there saved. Now, as they get a bunch of things in here, it's going to be really important for them to be able to filter and sort if they want to go and find their annotations. That's where those tags come in. So if I want all of my ELA annotations, I click on ELA and it filters all of my ELA annotations out. If I want my ELA poetry, I add poetry and it will combine those tags and show me only things that are ELA and poetry. So that's a really good tool to get students in, in, the, in the process of saving those tags. All right, so that is Scribble.com and how kids can use that to uh, annotate the web. And really, anything that's out on the web, they can annotate and uh, go back to and have saved.